Okay. I mean, do, do you yeah. usually have a tw Twitch or YouTube channel or no? Uh, yes, but I don't really post that much that often. Oh. But I'll oh. link it to you after. Okay. And I assume you can see the... Yeah. You can see the stream, right? Okay, great. This colors are really saturated for some reason. Yeah, saturated. Um, uh, I thought it was good for visuals, but I'm not sure if it is. One thing I'll say right away is that uh, right now the map is centered on you. Preferably you should not center it, or you should make it so that you can see the full map at all times. Full map at all times? Like, so, uh, uh, what does that mean? So you look at your mini map, right? You can't mm -hmm. see bombsite C right now. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And for now, that's not an issue because you're all five stacked. But especially on defense, it's going to become an issue because you're going to be playing A or you're going to be playing C, and then if something happens on the opposite bombsite, you're going to have no idea. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Um. Like, can, uh, can you give me an example? I guess like. Like uh, <clears throat> why I would want to see C site, or well, like uh because uh because uh, I, I guess I don't see the um what do you call it like why I'm doing that because I'm I'm attacking like if my whole my entire team is here. Well, no, right, you're attacking. Your entire team is here. But what if your entire team is not here? What if one of your teammates oh, yeah. is pushing C? What if two of okay, your teammates like, push pushing C? Oh, like if I if I was lurking in something. Right, if you were lurking, or if a teammate was lurking, and right now it's a, it's on attack. But what if um, what if you're on defense? Then let's say you're you're defending bombsite A, but then you have a teammate that's bombsite C, and your teammate is is getting information, right? That they're seeing things, but you're not able to see that because you're too far away. Okay. 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 So I should uh, keep my map. Uh, uh, visible. I mean, the entire all three sites visible to me. Okay. Yeah. Make the entire map visible at, at all times. At all times. And that should. So, so, so where awareness. should, so where should I stand usually? Like, uh, like, 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 where would I adjust this position? What, what do you mean? Like, if, if I if I'm walking to a site, should I just should I stay back to see C site, or should I? Uh... That's that's a separate topic. So here you're just playing your team. That's fine. What I'm talking about mm -hmm. is the minimap, is that there's a setting that you can... Oh, there's uh, a setting? Yeah, there's a setting, oh. right. So you can see the whole map all the time, no matter where you are on the map. Oh, okay. it's not... Okay, so there's a map setting that's not default that I can change to see the full thing? Yes. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, mm. so... Continue. There. Enemy spotted. Oh, Go fast, go fast, Urena's going fast, we go faster for you. Unfortunate thing. Let's see. Yeah, it's unfortunate. One thing I'll say, I mean, <clears throat> it's unfortunate you died. One thing I'll say is that as Chamber, you want to be looking for opportunities to set up your E whenever possible. And Haven is right. like a great map to do it because there's so many good locations where you can set up your E in like some random corner. And then as you're pushing and you're expecting, well, I'm going to like take a gunfight around some sort of corner, set up your E at that corner, and then you can have a quick TP. Okay. So, yeah, I think I think uh, I should have put put a teleport right yeah. where Jet was standing. What so. I would say is that while you're pushing, um, set up your first TP. Like, for example, you set your first TP into this corner to your left, right here, right to your left. <laughs> Okay. And because of, of the, the range on his TP, that you can set up your second TP at bombsite A, at bombsite B, in mid, in sewers, like it's even probably even like A link, for example, because of like how, how good the range is and it, the range is universal through walls. So basically, okay. yeah, just set up your, your first TP in a, in a good location mm -hmm. around like. Places where you expect to push, you expect to push A, you expect to push series, you might decide to wrap around, push push mid, and then the whole time you can keep your, your TP inside this this little cubby to your left. Okay. Okay. 
that's a good so um so if you did that then let's say you set a btp here then at this point we we might expect to take, take a gunfight where we're standing at the the bottom of a long or you might take a gunfight at the at the top of this ramp here into a sites in either case we can we can put a tp at uh, either one of these locations or in the middle if we're not entirely too sure and then we'll, we'll always have that tp available so if we do take a gunfight we get shot at we can always tp out okay okay so place so okay. place the first tp in a good escapable position and then uh the other one i mean i guess it, if I got into sight, I would probably uh should I should I put it on onto my like left side or something? No, left side, right side. Mm, what do you mean? Uh just like where my cross like where my crosshair was. Um, I mean, it depends where you end up anchoring, so to speak. So if mm -hmm. if you think that you're gonna push to sight and then tuck yourself into the right corner. Then yeah, you could put your TP there, but if you expect yourself to to push onto site, maybe go left or push onto site and then go onto site boxes, then maybe you put your TP further to the left or further forward. Or it really depends. It really depends where you expect to take the gunfight from. Okay. Okay. But the the key takeaway is that not necessarily your your second TP, but your first TP. Like even if that you have a good plan that well, I want to put a TP like here or there. That's not going to be useful if you're already in a gunfight and you haven't placed the first TP, then you're just going to TP in place, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be TPing to a different location. Yeah, I think I, I think in this game, you, you won't see me using Chambers TP that often. <laughs> I think that I recall. Yeah, yeah probably like a it's, third it's to hard. a half of the reason to play Chamber is because of his TP. Yeah, so, I mean, for yeah. me, for for me, uh, for me, I picked them because of the <clears throat> undroppable sheriff. But Und uh, undroppable sheriff. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you mean? Like if I die, I still have <clears throat> seven bullets. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean the the sheriff is nice to have, but it's his TP that's insane, insanely strong. It's his ultimate that's insanely strong. If you know how to use an op, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. his trip wires that makes him. An insanely strong sentinel. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing I, I like is is like the same thing I like Cypher because of his uh his slow traps. Right. Hmm. So that's another thing I didn't talk about either is that ideally on basically every single round you should have trips because of how good they are. And especially you you're the only play you're the only um player in your team that can actually watch flanks like with utility as opposed to like of dedicating someone, oh, dedicating an entire player to watching flank. Instead, it should yeah. be utility like your trip, or safety trip, or like a yeah, KJ okay. bot or something. That way, all five of your teammates can focus on pushing site instead of keeping people behind watching flank at all times. Yeah, I think I think um, like I I do catch like I usually do catch people with the slow traps. I just uh. I just don't have the habit of using the the um, teleport. Like I use every utility besides the teleport. I think I need. I don't know how to build the habit of using the um, teleport. So it goes back to to two things. The first is placing your teleport, your first teleport, in a safe location, and it's a lot easier to find a safe location if you're if you're on defense because you have all the time in the world to set up. But if you're on attack, then typically what I would do is that I would look for a safe location while i'm pushing so if i'm pushing along i'll put a tp uh, again like I'll put a tp like in this this corner here or i might even oh. consider putting a tp inside a lobby i don't know this fully just depends just somewhere that's safe right and mm -hmm. then the second tp should be placed where you expect to take a gunfight or maybe even multiple gunfights so for okay. example if you expect to take a gunfight here we're already like that uh, someone might peek you from from a site. The jet eventually peeks you, <laughs> like right here. Imagine if you had a TP already set up. Now you have all the tools available to take this gunfight and back out if you need to. That's true. Yeah. So you think I should have placed it right like where I'm standing? 
like I... if I had uh, maybe if I start my uh, TP in uh, maybe close to the what do you call it the C long I mean C long no not A long uh like the house in A long and I just place my teleport <clears throat> like where I'm standing. What I guess I'm the one I'm trying to get at is not necessarily like um, where you where is the best place to put a TP because you don't necessarily know uh, it's, exactly. It's game sense, I get it. I yeah, get it. right. It's all game sense, right? And there's, yeah, okay. there's no right or wrong answer about oh, you should have placed it to the top or place it to the bottom or place it in the corner or place it on wait until you get on site and then place it on site. It really just depends. Yeah. Where do you expect to take gunfights? And sometimes okay, you'll be sense. right. And sometimes you'll be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, so I, I could, I could put put one here. I mean, yeah. just in case. Right. So but. I'm just saying that it's an option, but mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. It all goes back to to game sense. But at least it, that you're you should be thinking all the time, thinking about when am I going to be taking a gunfight and should I be using my TP for this gunfight or can I win it win this gunfight without the TP and then be more greedy of the TP, for example. Like for if you get onto site. And then put your TP on site, that's like more greedy compared to putting a TP just to help you take an entry gunfight, for example. Because once uh, you have a, a TP on site, you have like more options. You can like watch Heaven, you can watch CT, you can take really aggressive angles on defending the site once the bomb is planted, for example, and then TP out. Like you have more options basically. But then there's a high risk because then you're not necessarily guaranteed to actually get onto site. Okay. okay. But uh, I guess the key takeaway is, uh, is to constantly be thinking about your TP. Think about where okay. I can or where I should be placing it. Okay, where? Okay, um. So a place that I that's close to where I'm going to take my gun. Let me place the first TP close to where I'm my uh, first gun fight. But like. Place your. Uh, little... A little bit further away from, like the actual place, and then yeah, let's that, go back to being place place your first TP in a safe location, mm -hmm. then place the second TP where you expect you take a gunfight. Okay. Um. So, do you think like uh, if I like for example uh, the bind map with the the map with the two portals? Okay. Uh, or three portals. I don't know. Uh, the one with the um, with the um, what do you call it? The hookah. Yep. Um. Like <laughs> if I, I mean, I, I mean, when when I use the teleport, uh, when I when I place the teleports in with chamber there, I usually put it like between the two sides, just to, just so I could get back, uh, between both of them in the beginning beginning the round. Is that a bad bad way to do it, or, or? It's situational. It depends oh. how you want to use your TPs. Sometimes, okay, you decide you want to use your TP for fast rotations, maybe because that the the enemy team keeps hard committing to pushes, and then having a fast rotate would be really beneficial to your team. So that way, every time that the enemy pushes, they always run into a three or possibly even four stack. Mm -hmm. But okay. there's also other options that you can use your TP for, like taking a um, off angles, for example, if you play bind on A site, you can TP yourself on top of truck and take a really aggressive off angle that watches A short. Okay. Likewise, if you're playing defense on B bind, you could put a TP in, inside of hookah and then take an aggressive peek outside of hookah. And you know what's to do like every single round? Like you'll do it like once or twice during the match to catch people off guard, people are, like pushing up be short and then maybe not pay attention or the cross is in the right place you get a pick with your op or whatever tp out okay. so there's a lot of uh options that you have with chamber tp and that's what makes them so strong that you have all these options and all of them are generally pretty good so i i should think about like uh chambers teleport as like a versatile thing where like like i, I could like uh, if i uh if I leave this site, I should always always take it with me, and then maybe place keep keep uh, making adjustments to the teleports or something. I'd say make adjustments based on the like, the situation, or make adjustments based on the pace of the match. Okay, I'll 
it's like uh, I mean this type of thing. It's just a really game sense, right? It's not like a conk, like a it's like a really good way to do it, right? For right. every map, okay. right? There's again, there's there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about how you feel about the situation, or what do you predict to happen? Like when do you expect the gunfight to happen, or what do you think will bring the most value? Taking this off angle or fast rotating or whatever, etc. Understand uh, about the teleport. I, I, I guess I'll have to keep playing the chamber and uh, focus on using his, his teleport in situations and just like see if I get if I understand how to how to, how to uh, play him in more maps or something. Yeah, chamber is like really strong, really versatile. Yeah, I think he's good in most of the maps. Except for maybe, I think he's okay on my ice box too, but not the best. I think Chamber is basically always good as long as you can abuse his op. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh, so back to this match. The uh, only other thing I would say is that uh, it seems like here you decided to to, to fall by all eight shots on your 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 custom deagle, so to speak, your golden deagle, mm -hmm. and. With that, you, you decide to stick to your team. And that's not necessarily a bad idea. You can, you can five man push, that's, a, that's always good. But what I want to propose is another idea is that with your eight shots of your custom deagle, that you can take long range fights. And that'll generally be favorable to you because you have no, no damage fall off, right? Mm -hmm. So, one option you have besides pushing with your team is that. Let's say, for example, you decide to lurk C long. And then oh. if you find yourself in a gunfight from C long, someone's playing on platform, someone's playing backside, whatever, you take that, that gunfight you, you take that gunfight and you force it. Because you can one shot them, two shot them even, but they cannot do the same to you. Okay. Um so, so you're saying like if I if my teammates are going for A push, I can like uh Distract the enemy team by going for a C push long. Yeah, don't don't think of it as just a distraction. I mean, that's one option that you can have from lurking. Just mm -hmm. think of it as lurking in general. And then whether okay. you decide to be a distraction, whether you decide to just try to take map control or or whatnot, that depends on how you decide to play it. Okay. Um. Yeah, and uh, what what do you think about like if if like a team. Like uh, I guess like the one thing that I I do think about is like uh when I play with ch uh, chambers and like uh I mean even though even though like pistol rounds probably probably the round that the chamber has the most advantage and um I mean that they they could still have, they could still buy sheriffs and I mean I see a lot of people in my elo buy sheriffs and uh, they I, I do sometimes get well, one picked from them. Uh, yeah, that's always a possibility. Just. Uh, I mean, it could happen. In general, you're you're still better equipped because of your golden deagle being better than a normal deagle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think people said the the gold the gold cherry is is almost as good as the guardian or something. Yeah, it pretty much is because there's no damage fall off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think re recently, I think my I mean not recently, like the last couple. They like week or so. I've been mostly using guardians. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Okay, so any questions so far? Uh, what? Uh, is like how? Like, what can I do to improve? Like, I don't know, like my crosshair uh, placement. Is it? Uh, is it like in a bad spot or what? Or, uh. Well, like, by, by now it's we're, we're paused on. It's definitely in a bad spot. It's aimed at the yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so what should like should that be pointing at the edge or something? You should be aiming to the left of this corner. The left of this corner. So okay. let me change this. So I'm sharing screen instead. And bring up the drawing tool. So this is the. Start drawing. Look. 
Okay, so this is the wall, right? The corner. Mm -hmm. And this is your crosshair right here. You should set aim here. So the okay. left the left of this corner. Because no one's gonna come <laughs> through this wall. No one's gonna come to the right of the wall. If someone's yeah. standing here, they're gonna peek like this. Peek from the left of the wall. Yeah, I I guess uh yeah that's that's the one thing I I also have trouble with is like uh, knowing uh, exactly where to put my uh, cross. Like I I know like uh, I should have my cross here as uh, close to eye level, but I uh, I sometimes don't know like in terms of angles and walls. Yeah, in general, think about which angles that the enemy can pick you from. So the enemy can't pick you here, and they can't pick you here. Right? They can't pick anywhere inside of this wall to the right of this wall they can only pick you to the left of this wall okay. so keep your crosshair somewhere here okay understood okay any other questions so far no okay so let's go back to let's see so okay. Die, it's unfortunate. Hopefully, you know, your team did not trade you out, so it's unfortunate. I don't, I don't even remember if I won this match or not. <clears throat> okay, well, winning and losing is not that important. What's more important is to make sure that we're still maximizing our value every single round. I am everywhere. <clears throat> Okay, let's pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, what am I thinking right now? <clears throat> yeah, what are you thinking? What's your game plan? Like, in, in terms of, like, what, what I'm thinking about in this, like, uh, while I'm, I'm in the game, or, or as I'm watching it? Mm, I guess both. Uh, I guess, like, I guess in the game, I was thinking maybe they might, there might be people, people coming from C Garage, and, uh, and uh, um, I actually don't know what happens after this, but uh, okay. So um, we're thinking we're, someone's gonna push from C garage, and then we're just gonna hold C garage from mid window. Is that a bad idea? No, I'm just trying to figure out what you're thinking. So we're gonna make this play, and then how long are we gonna stay here? How long do we watch C garage? Well, I was, I, I think what I usually do, like look at the like whenever. Someone in my team had already has a spike, um, and they're going to A. I usually look at look at the, uh, like the mid B, uh, window and to see if there's any enemies or something. I usually look at it. I just 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 have a peek. I don't know. Okay, so that... let, let's say that nobody pushes from C garage. What what do we do? I guess go I go with my team and then place down some traps. Okay, when do we go with our team? I guess as soon as they start pushing. Okay, so if your, te what if your team starts pushing A like immediately, then do you just give up C garage or do you continue watching it for five seconds, ten seconds, thirty seconds? Well, well, I usually just look at the. I guess are you saying like if there's like nobody, like no nobody like if I walk forward to the window and there's nobody on either C garage and C garage or uh, B main. Uh, like what? What? What would I do? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like what would you do? Like what is your flow chart? Like we're we're holding C garage, but like for how long, basically? And then uh, <clears> what do we do uh, after holding C garage? Do we go somewhere else? Seem like we want to go to an A. I I usually probably stay there for maybe less than two, like <clears throat> five seconds. I don't know tops. Okay. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Anything else you that you're thinking? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll look at B main. <clears throat> this any, any, I mean, I'm not too sure if I do in this. I, I, maybe I do do. I, I feel like I do do it in this clip. I feel like I, I feel like that's something I do every game, every Haven game. Okay. It's, it's like I always like if my team decides to go to A, I'll, I'll, I'll take a quick look at the windows. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So that's our game plan. Makes every sense. Um, one thing I'll say again is that we should always consider looking whenever possible, whenever, whenever a good opportunity presents itself, and 
also looking for opportunities to abuse our golden sheriff so for example again going see long taking a, a long range gunfight if you um assume that oh. the enemy because they won pistol round they're probably going to be buying uh, specters for example right maybe a marshal possibly if they're playing c-long but even then you have a golden shelf you'll you can still fight head to toe uh, mm -hmm. or head head to head head to toe against a, a marshal oh, yeah so always look for like those kind of opportunities where i can i can take advantage of my golden sheriff and then put myself in a favorable gunfight yeah okay like, uh, I guess, like, um, uh, I guess the one thing that I do think about, like, when whenever I lose my pistol round with the golden, sh uh, golden pistols, like, uh, I, I could, I could get, I mean, a marshal can one tap me in the body because I don't, I don't, I don't usually buy shields, and if I lose the round, then you can buy shields. Uh, I should buy shields when I lose the round too. And it's the situation. If you expect to, if your plan is to go see long. Take a long-range gunfight, and then you expect that someone that that C long is going to be using a marshal. Then okay. go ahead and c consider buying light shields, so that you'll survive the body shot, and then you'll still be just as deadly as, as they are. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so, I guess yeah, that's 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 probably a good. Yeah, cool even way. though you're you're on a, like a much cheaper buy than they are, you can still fight them. Okay, that makes sense. I I. I um... I mean, I, I usually I usually always just follow like the the way other people do things because uh, I I haven't been playing this game that long, but that, that makes sense. Just like a uh, change of flow, the how depending on the game goes, yeah. Okay. Okay, so just throwing it as an option. Uh, here we're holding garage. What I would say is that two things. One is that if we're holding garage, because of this distance is like pretty far away, like I don't know, if, like forty meters, thirty five meters, like that, we should. Mm -hmm. Consider zooming in or using a ADS on our Golden Sheriff to make that shot easier. The okay. second thing I would say is that we should not stand here, but instead, because this is like kind of a little bit on the open and you're inside window, not exposed to be, but you're farther away oh. from the corner than you need to be. So you can like hug this corner to your left a bit more tightly so that if you find yourself in a gunfight, you can always fall back. You can take cover oh. immediately. Hold the corner, hold the, hold the, hold the corner, like, next to the map. Uh, let me see. Nice god. Like, I mean, Everywhere. yeah, yeah, like, like, right here, right? Like here. Yeah, even here's a little bit far, so let me go back. Uh, Side move. Uh, kind of like here, kind of. Okay. Like this would be like a, a okay to good distance. Or oh, I'm sorry, good okay to good angle to hold on garage because of how close you are to this corner. So that if you need to, you can fall back like immediately and like, disengage. Okay. So, so stay around where but, I'm standing. Right. But in here, like now you're more and more exposed. And so just, just, just kind of hug yeah. the, this. Uh, right. Hug this your corner to your left. Hug corners. Okay. Hug okay. walls and cover as as much okay. as possible. That's yeah. just a, a general rule of thumb. Gotta think about my corners. Okay. Okay. So okay, we're waiting, and then we immediately start to look at mid. Oh no! It seemed like uh, <laughs> you said that we, you were gonna turn around and go toward A because your when your team pushes A, we go A. But here we stick around mid. Yeah, and then even like after we we fight the sage, I would already consider like getting out of here. It's now they know where you are. They know that someone's in window. There's only exactly one angle to peek, unless you decide to uh, take a, a little bit riskier off angle by going deeper into window. Like you say, you you go deeper into the window, like to your left here, mm -hmm. to to take a little bit of an off angle, so that when people peek you from when people peek mid window, they look at exactly where you're standing. They look at this corner here. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, it's generally a lot more predictable compared to if you were following. And you see how this random peeks you, right? She peeks you. She looks exactly where you're standing when he's, when she decides to swing and peek window. Yeah, she's yeah, she's peeking. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So you think in... Uh, uh, yeah, I, sh I think in this situation, I should have at least uh, placed down a, a teleport or something. Yeah, you ahead. could. If, if, you, if you're insisting on holding window for some amount of time and then hoisting gunfights here, then you could uh, put TP so you, you can take a... A, a, take it take an off angle for these fights in mid okay so that's one option that's saying it's the very wrong option again it's all depending on how how you feel how how, how what, you what, yeah. what do you think what do you think you you would have done if you saw like these two enemies here uh what i would do is that because um here we kind of swing and peek the entirety of mid instead what i would do is that i would peek the left corner first See if I can pause it. Peek it like this, right? So you only see the left side. If this Vayner peeks you from the right side, she's not going to see you, and you're not going to see her. Instead, you're you're only able to see the sage, and the sage is only able to see you. That way, you're you're isolating angles and isolating gunfights. Peeks so I should peek a little bit more slowly. Right? Like peek peek slow, slow. carefully. Peek carefully. Slow. Just, just open the angle a little, a little at a time. Okay. Right, exactly. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever heard heard the term, but basically it's like slicing the pie. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think I saw a little bit of a Valorant video of that, but I just don't know how it applies to every situation yet. So it applies here perfectly. Okay. Just think but of it, mid I... as a pie, and we want to peak the angles one at a time. Oh, okay. Even That's... right here, take a good you've you've already peaked two angles because someone could be could have been already gotten to the mid cubby, straight ahead to your left. And we kinda just oh. wide swung it without considering it. Oh yeah, so I should have done done the slicing of the pie right before it came in or something. Yeah. And then here we decide to peak mid and what happens? we we're, we're now we're now exposed to both left and right of mid. So basically where the Sage is standing, left side, and then where the Vayner peeks us, which is the right side. Okay. So if I'll go, like after we see the Sage, our goal is like, okay, the Sage is going to re-peek us from left side. That's where our crosshair is placed. The crosshair is good. Then the problem is that we're, we're still exposed to the second angle, the right side of mid. And then what happens when this Vayner peeks us? That we're, we're kind of caught off guard, and we're, we're forced to make this this big flick, which takes us some amount of time. Whereas the Reina already knows exactly where to look, because you're playing in the most common angle when someone's yeah. playing mid. And, and she and she could probably see the map because Sage saw me. Yeah, and she, she probably knows exactly where you are because of the mini map. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, apply this. Yeah, I got. So there's like two ways to apply slice the pie in this window place. Right. And uh, also to follow up is that because you're you're thinking or you're expecting, you're planning to take gunfights from people in mid, like that sage and then eventually this, this Vayner, that because of this distance, you should consider zooming in or consider using your, your ADS. Again, okay. to, to, to boost your accuracy, make sure you land the headshot. Otherwise, you okay. you would need like three body shots, which takes too much time. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. ADS, ADS, um, ADS for uh, long range fights. For a long range fight, okay. And uh, and the, and the other thing is just take the, <laughs> take the angle slowly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions so far? Hmm. Uh, I mean, in terms of, um, uh, I mean, uh, what would you, what would you think I should have done if I if let's say like a third person peeked in from the garage or something? Then I would just be dead. <laughs> That's basically a timing <laughs> peak. <laughs> Where like okay. you're you're busy on a gunfight already, fighting Sage or fighting Reno. That there's no way that you can possibly look at both angles at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, at best, a, you could. Um, if you I can, anticipate the... Yeah, if you anticipate it, at best that you can um, position yourself in such a way that you isolate angles. So, like, which we did originally here, like you're isolating mid, look at garage, 
and then eventually you're looking at mid you could position deeper into mid window so that you isolate garage not have to worry about garage only worry about mid okay but that's kind of a little bit more situation it really just depends it like for that scenario it depends that if you expect a garage push like you know two three rounds in a row people have pushed out of garage and for whatever reason that you're you're forced into a fight in mid then you can try to use your positioning to make sure that you're not exposed to too many angles at the same time okay that makes sense thank you uh okay anything else not at this time okay Let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? What's your game plan for this round? Um, I, I think I did this because I, I'm not too sure if my team does does push to A or not. I think I think it's because I assume they push to A, <clears throat> and I think they are gonna push to A up later on this clip. So I put down these two traps because, uh, if they walk to um from C or C garage. They'll probably get caught by my trap. Okay, so these trips are s supposed to watch A, like an A lobby push? They're, sub they're supposed to watch... Uh, they're supposed to watch uh, the flanks from the windows and uh, and from C if they come through there. Okay. So but, uh, are you planning to push A while these tri trips watch uh, T-spawn for you? Actually, uh, yeah, for, I think for, I think so, but I, uh, I think I do push with them this time. Like, the, uh, don't quote me on that because I don't remember what I did. Okay, but uh, uh, I feel like I didn't watch the windows after I put these traps down. Okay, well, the other thing I want to ask you is, your what do you decide to buy? You decide to buy a Marshall. Why is that? Oh. Cause uh, I thought that'd be a good weapon to go a long. Okay, why not a guardian? Why not a vandal? How how much money did I have? I don't remember. Do you have another twenty three fifty, which is enough to buy a vandal? Oh, enough to buy whatever uh, you want, sizing up. I, I think sometimes it's just uh, because I kind of feel like using a marshal. I don't know. Like uh, like I, 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 like sometimes I just pick a weapon because I thought it's cheap. Like doesn't hurt the economy <laughs> if I lose the round, and uh, and uh, it's kind of fun to use it. I don't know. Okay, um, so it's good you think about economy. Um, yeah. what I would say is that even if you, even if you lose the round, like you lose the round, and you still have okay economy. But the enemy team is going to have even better economy. Right? That's true. Winning rounds is always better than losing rounds in terms mm. of like how much money you gain. So if oh. say you lose this round, you go into the fourth round and then you can buy again. But so can the enemy. Now the enemy can not only can they buy, but they can also like upgrade their weapons. They can upgrade to a Phantom Vandal, upgrade if they wanted to, whatever. Mm. So but third round is like the crucial round where you your team needs to win the round that's almost a given mm -hmm. or and or they need to do like um, um economical damage then like like kill the enemy not just win out but kill as many as you can so that you force as many people to to buy new weapons the worst thing that happened on, on third round is that your team loses the round and doesn't really kill many enemies such that now the enemy keeps their guns and bonuses them and or just they upgrade a couple of them and the economy is still going really strong yeah. whereas on fourth round if your team loses generally your team will be broke and yet you you're forced to eco again uh that's true uh i i, I guess I, I just don't like something i'm like um i just have this mindset that like if i get a guardian I have to have full shields. Like that's kind of like how I pair it. So, um, so I'm like, I'm like, 
if, if I buy half shields, which is pretty cheap, then I thought uh, it's a good pairing of a Marco. I don't know. That makes sense. I would say that uh, a Guardian Light is generally a better buy than a Marshall Heavy. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll do. I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, buy. But so you think a buy in Guardian and the Light Shield is good if you lose two rounds in a row? Well, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that you should full buy. Oh, Unless okay. you and your teammates are all on the same page, like if your team is also doing some sort of half buy for economy reasons, then that's like a little more situational. But ninety nine percent of the time, people in the third round will for will full buy, full buy, buy everything they can. And mm. to add on to this, that you might be playing for economy, but it doesn't matter, like um, how your economy is going to the fourth round. If the rest of your team can't buy, if you can buy, mm. that's great. But then you still have four teammates who can't buy anything. So then, what's the point of you having something? That's true. Unless you have like some very specific strategy, some sort of specific reason that you're gonna yeah, play you like protect the peasant or something like that. No, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Usually, the only thing I think about is just, um, like I, I guess I, I just want uh. To not like uh, have to buy really bad weapons later on, but I guess I guess I'll, I'll try to I'll do the guardian light shield uh, or I mean full buy with the team. I guess yeah, yeah. full buy with the team. And okay. as chamber, so, so. you shouldn't even have to worry about economy too much because worst case scenario, you can always fall back to your sheriff. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you could even take it one step further and say that instead of buying a marshal, I can just use my sheriff. So let me just buy a vandal. And then, if I lose this round with the Vandal, the next round I'll use the Sheriff. But if I win this round with the Vandal, then I'll keep the Vandal for next round. Okay. That makes sense to me. The only other reason to consider would be uh, if you're trying to save for an op. But it seems like hey, you haven't, you're you not planning to use an op. No, uh, I've been using so far. Like, I like using an op, but I just never buy it because like I just feel like that would hurt. The, the like if I ever like accidentally dropped the round like that's gonna hurt the team is like they they get it up, and our team is down bad. So uh, I I mean so that's why I never buy it. Then if you're not gonna up, you should probably not play chamber. Honestly, uh, I, don't know. I, I I like using the chambers ultimate, but I don't like uh, buying the up. Mm, I guess so. Just. Like the the two best operator players in the game are Jet and Chamber, because they have a dash and because they oh. have a TP, which allows okay. them to take like really aggressive angles, really aggressive positions. So you think, you think, uh, whenever I like our our team is like doing like uh, I mean like, is uh, has like over five thousand per member. I should just get it off or something. I mean, if even if you have five thousand, I would consider buying an op. I would okay. even consider to the extent where if you have barely forty seven hundred, I would I would even consider getting up no shields because okay. of how, how important it is to have an up on a chamber or have an up on a jet and abuse it as much as possible every chance that you get. Okay. And then okay. not having shields is not like a huge deal because you always have dash, you always have TP, and that's your get out of jail free card. Okay. Understand. Understood. Yeah, I think another thing I I uh to mention is I, I probably have like uh I'm pretty I'm pretty bad at positioning too I think so, like uh where to uh, uh I don't know like like sometimes an enemy um enemy uh like would. <clears throat> Like, like I would see an enemy that's like a, like like a little bit far away, and maybe there's there's a couple of other enemies that's uh, also close by. I'm, I'm maybe uh, like usually that, that this happens when I'm like two versus five. Like I, I just never know like uh like what I should like how how I should start the picking or something. Like even though I they don't know where I I'm at, but I know where they're at. If that makes sense. Okay, well, if we get, uh, do we get to any 2v5 situations in this VOD? 
I don't even, I don't even call. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I think well, I, ha- I think this mod is like, not. I mean, like it doesn't have anything too spectacular. I, uh, I don't, I don't remember. I might, I might have something good. I might, I might have something. Okay. I just, I just, re- I just record them and I, I just, just to see, like, I mean, just to see if there's anything good usually yeah. on that play. If we come across one of the situations, then we can discuss it further in, in more detail. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay, so back to this round, uh, we'll play some chest to watch flank. Looks like we're watching T-spawn flank, so we're presumably going to be pushing A, so that's therefore our flank will be T-spawn. And we're using a marshal. Yeah. Okay. And we're still deciding where to put a trip. Okay, maybe not. Keep the trip there. That works. Okay, so we put a trip that watches garage way. push, supposedly. So we're not pushing um, anymore. Okay, so what's an A? I'll only, um... At this point, I'll consider getting ore, but okay, not a big deal. Good go. Okay, that line up for you. No line up. Let me back out. Let me back with you. Yeah. Again, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. I stepped back though. We're like. You already got. <laughs> Two additional kills that you really deserved, but okay, we take those. At this point, you have 13 health, and you have like full map control. You have your team has bomb. Your yeah. omen is a little bit too far behind you, and so this is like a really risky good fight that you're taking with the enemy omen. That's true. Um, Reloading. And you notice our omen was too late to, to trade you out. Mm-hmm. Well, not a big deal. Yeah, okay, so we make the same play, this time we have Guardian. We're gonna go for go for arena, we're too far behind. I'm not expecting, is that okay? Let's go back to this. So while we're watching this angle, wow. pay attention to your three teammates in front of you. Plus the, <laughs> the Viper behind you who's currently putting up a wall. Right? <laughs> so Viper is is just finished putting up a wall. Jet is grabbing orb. Reyna spent one flash, and Omen is slightly ahead of Reyna, but this looks like they're ready to push together. All right. Mm-hmm. So they're pushing, they're pushing, they're pushing. Reyna was a knife out. Pushing, 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 and now she has a flash being in her hands. So, mm-hmm. what does this tell us? Like, based on the positioning of our teammates and based on the body language of our teammates, that the Reyna has a flash in her hand. Like, any time that a teammate has a flash being in their hand. Like ninety nine percent of the time, that means they're gonna they're gonna shoot the flash, right? Yeah. And then ninety nine percent of the time after that, they're gonna push with the flash. They're gonna push onto site, right? And when they're pushing, they're more likely to get into a gunfight. Yeah. So when our team does this, and our team gets into a gunfight, when our team is playing aggressive, generally speaking, we should also be playing aggressive. We should also be thinking. When my Reyna gets to this gunfight, which is going to be pretty soon, that we should also be in that gunfight as fast as possible, as soon as possible. Oh, so um, I should maybe start by put, uh, putting out my teleports? Yeah, you should You should start being aggressive, whatever that might be. It might be like sending up your TPs, it might just be just simply pushing with the Reyna, so as soon as she gets to a gunfight, then you're immediately like right behind her, you can join that gunfight immediately. Help trade out. She fights someone at logs. She fights someone on a platform. Wherever that you already have an angle on on that within less than a second. Yeah, I, th- I think my mind my mindset going in here is just I was thinking that they were gonna peek out from the box and and because like my I think my teammates all have like specters or something. I, I, I like from that that range like if they had like a vandal or something I think. A band will probably be better than the specters. I don't know, but a guardian can probably, if 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 it's on if it's on their head, I could I could probably take them out. So, what do you expect the enemy to peek from? Like the behind the box or something. Behind the box. Which box? The, the box is in sight. Uh, like the the one uh, right next to the um, they call viper wall. So the angle that you're looking at right now. Yeah. Okay, so if someone were to peek from that angle that you're looking at right now, they'd be staring mm-hmm. into four four people. Plus, they they'd eat the the viper decay. 
Oh, okay. So okay. it would be extremely unlikely for anybody to survive that. Maybe they get a kill, like a one tap or something, but guarantee they're gonna die immediately afterward, unless they can, I don't know, they're ready to dismiss out or something. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, in this situation, it's, I just, uh, my whole team uh, seems aggressive, I, I'd be aggressive. Yeah, rule of thumb is that we should match our, our pace to our team's pace. So in other words, if our team is playing aggressive, generally speaking, we should also play aggressive. Likewise, if our team's playing passive, if they're just sitting back and waiting for pitch, uh, waiting for pushes or waiting to get a pick, then we should also play passive. Okay. Generally speaking. Okay. Match my match my teammates' energy. Okay. Or, or the majority of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm expecting here, Nirvana and Omen are gonna push in. Jet's gonna soon follow, and then we're gonna be too far away from. This, these gunfights are about to happen and then we're not going to provide any value. That's kind of what I'm expecting. So let's see. Possible. So there's a flash. Now, Rainier and Omen are already on site. The wound's actually cleared left side, but not a big deal. Now Jet's on site. Now we're already planning the bomb. And then we haven't done anything. We've just looked at this useless angle. Somehow we planned the bomb. No one's gotten oh, to yeah. any gunfights. That's the most surprising thing. Okay, so next thing that we're watching flank, but we have a trip, so what's the point of watching flank? That's true, that's true. I, I guess I have, I, have, I have a habit of like, like liking uh, to like uh, get the tr get the trip for, and, th and then go for the kill. I don't know, <laughs> but I think I should stop doing that, yeah. If that's the case, then you should play a, a different angle so that as soon as an enemy um, triggers the trip or they're forced to shoot the trip, that's the time that you peak. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so like, uh, closer to the boxes or something? And so, the boxes. let me just try to find a, uh, a map here. And then let me stream that map. <laughs> okay, oh, so we have a trip. I think our trip is here, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it other side of this box? Uh, I think it might be the, um, like the one that, I think the middle of the box. So it's actually here? No, oh, no, no, no. The, the middle? The middle? What, what do you mean? Like, uh, to you. To, okay. to, Let's just go back. Uh, see what we actually put the trip. I'll put it there. there. Oh, I, th I thought I put it, I put it on the middle <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. Okay, so you put it there, right? And then go back okay. to the map. So yeah, you're right. Our trip the, the, is here. That means that it basically watches like this, right? So mm -hmm. if an enemy pushes from T-spawn, from flank, then they have to stand somewhere here for the trip to get activated or before they can yeah, see the trip. That, that was a bad place, but anyway, <laughs> that's a really bad, that was a bad, like, uh, probably not the best spot to, because they got to, Step in a little bit more to get uh, tripped on. Well, why is that? Why is that bad? I think if I put a little bit closer to the edge of the box, I think it would have been a little bit better. The edge? Do you mean like put it here or put it here? Yep. Yeah. Put it there. The second. So you, the second. The second one. Yeah. So you put it here, then someone who's standing here can see it. Oh no no no! Like uh like, I think I'm like a. Like maybe like a couple of pixels off, not like not not. I think I I put I put the bomb like one pic like a couple of pixels of pixels off the edge of the box or something. A gift. Like a little bit closer. Yeah, I, don't know. I think it's not really a big deal. It's that's not okay. It's it's gonna be watching the exact same spot. Okay. In fact, I would even consider putting it further further upward, so because of the the range. Zoom out because of the the range on his trip. That if you put it here, it watches like this. Right and now, okay. this is this is a wasted space. Mm -hmm. But if you put it here, then that's further away from the angle, and it still watches the same spot here. Okay. Right. The goal sense. is to watch this, so that when they walk into it, the trip gets activated. And by putting it further away, like if you put it hugging like this, then they could potentially 
get an angle advantage because of the the trip being closer to the corner than they are like if they peek it from like from here they could potentially see the trip like a, a pixel of the trip okay right, so sense. angle advantage that uh, you put it farther away from the corner farther away from this corner now it becomes more difficult for someone to to see it when they're pushing like this okay but for now that's those are kind of mounting details the main important thing is that we have a trip here which is good positioning generally and it's watching like this Right, so when someone pushes in, we ex expect the chip to get activated. We know exactly where the enemy is going to be standing. Going to stand somewhere in this rectangle, and then we just need to find an angle where we can peek this rectangle um, as soon as chip gets activated. And then where we're standing is that we're nowhere near that. Where uh, going back to the map, we are standing here. And then looking like this. Uh, oh, just like this. Okay. Yeah, looking, looking. Let's see, let me see. Looking yeah. sort of like this, right? Mm -hmm. And if the chip gets activated, you know they're gonna be standing in here. In order for you to actually pick this, you need to get to this doorway, or you need to get to this spot in order to to see this rectangle. Mm -hmm. And then okay. for you to get there. This takes, I don't know, three seconds. This takes, I don't know, four seconds. Where the trip, they've already activated the trip, and then they now they have a lot of time to, to, um, if there's jet, you can dash out. Omen could be TP, TP out or something, or even the, the chip gets activated and they start running backwards, back to cover. So you're too far away to take advantage of a trip. If your goal is to take advantage of a trip, you should really be standing, like, probably here. Okay. So that trip gets activated, and we immediately turn this corner and kill this person while they're stuck in the slow. Okay, makes sense. Okay, just get it closer. Uh, uh, be a little bit, just be like a, uh, be unseen, but a little bit closer to the trap. Yep. If if that's my intention to pick off, yeah. Just think of it as you're you're training a teammate. If your teammate, same thing. If, if think of your, if you think of your teammate as a trip, if your teammate, let's say that your team is is here, watching the angle like here, then if they get into a gunfight, someone's going to cross into them. You want to be able to peek this angle, what they're looking at, and trade them immediately. So if you're standing here, this is too far away. This gunfight's going to happen. Your team die, teammate dies, or the, the the fight's already decided, and then the enemy can like fall back or the enemy can like disengage or whatever and by the time you're like oh i need to trade my teammate get to here they're already gone well the fight's already mm -hmm. over okay. so you would have to play somewhere like here so you're, you're breaking line of sight and your trip slash teammate is playing here watching like this and then when this gets activated gunfight happens whatever we swing we get a trade kill Okay. I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And uh, okay, so we're watching. Let's go back to. Oops. Go back to the C. So we're watching flank, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I would say that generally, I would rely on the trip to watch flank unless we're we're really certain or have a good read that an enemy likes to flank a lot then okay then then we'll we'll double up on the trip to make sure that we'll play off of it and ensure that kill happens otherwise i would just let the trip watch flank and then we'll get guaranteed value being on site and guaranteed value training our teammates etc okay so trip okay that's that's probably a good better way to look at it is if I'm a, if I if I just play place <clears throat> the trips down and just be be on the set with my teammates, it's like guaranteed value. But this is like it could be good value, but it's like risky. Right? So the idea is that the enemy team does not necessarily have to flank. The enemy team just has to go to site, right? So mm -hmm. by playing site, that's guaranteed value. You're guaranteed to help your teammates. By watching flank, that's not guaranteed value because the enemy is not guaranteed to be flank. Yeah. Okay. 
So mm -hmm. that's just a rule of thumb. Sometimes it is a good idea to watch flank, especially if the enemy continues to flank over and over and over. Then yeah, go ahead. Then double up on the flank, and because that becomes more and more consistent value if they keep insisting on in flanking. Okay, and on uh, in terms of like how like uh, do higher elo players flank this way or or is it was it just was it just like this type of flank is for lower elo people? I'd say it's situational. Uh, so like higher ranked people. Yeah. It depends on the map. It depends on what round it is. Depends on what guns they they have versus what you have, or well, what uh, the economy looks like, or how many people are alive. If it's like a five v two, then this flank would be extremely common just to catch people off guard because their goal is not necessarily to push into sight, but instead just to to get exit kills, for example. And this is a great place to get exit kills. Oh, okay. Oh, like like when the bomb is about to go off, or something. Right. Okay. Uh, only thing I would say is that uh, that's another negative for watching flank is that we already have two trips watching flank actually. So it's not just one trip. We have we have two because there's a second one that's between. Uh, it's like it's in the middle of T spawn, mm -hmm. where that trip would have to break first before this other trip that we that we're looking at breaks. So I I won't actually know like which one went off. <laughs> You'll know which one goes off, but I'm saying that you have an extra, extra warning oh. time. Oh, yeah. So another option you could do is that you just play sight for now, and then if the first trip gets activated, then we TP back or we, we, we rotate back and and try to play off the second uh, trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, sh I, should, I should just play some teleports here. I forgot. Mm -hmm. This... Uh, place a teleport here and one on site. Uh, not specifically teleport. I mean, you could also put teleport. What I'm trying to get at is the fact that you have two trips active, right? Mm -hmm. So you have two layers of trips watching flank. So you can rely on the first trip to tell you whether to fall back and watch flank or not. Okay. No, I I, I get it. Just uh, um. Wait, wait for the first one to go off, and then teleport here, and then wait for this, and then and wait then, for the second one, and then play off the second trip. Right. So this all goes back to the the fundamental concept of maximizing a value. Make sure we're maximizing our value every single round, every single situation. Mm -hmm. So given the situation that that we're in, the best way to maximize our value is to get value on sites until the first trip gets activated. Then we get value by watching flank, playing off the trip. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any questions so far? Mm, <clears throat> no. No. Okay. The hunt begins. So actually... Oh yeah, the whole. Oh yeah, the whole team is there. While we're doing this as well, is it because. We're not uh, actively watching. We're sort of watching an angle, but not really because you have two trips. So really, you, sh you, sh you should wait for the trips to activate before you do tunnel vision on holding in it this angle. So while this is, you're just standing here in this corner, waiting for the trips to, to activate, you should look at the minimap. See, where is my team positioned? How's the fight going? Um, how is, how am I, how's my team holding sights? Are they holding it well? Um, how's the enemy pushing? Like, what angles are they pushing from? Who, what utility have they spent? And what what enemies have we seen so far? So, for example, a simple example is that if we've seen all five enemies of the enemy, then watching flank is no longer any any value because the enemy can cannot be possibly flank if all five enemies were spotted CT spawn because uh, for whatever reason if you see all five people CT spawn, then we should immediately just just rotate, rotate and help our team. Okay. But you don't you you'd only be able to do this if you're maximizing your awareness. Your first is that you're aware that you don't need to worry about this thing. You don't need to tunnel vision on this angle if the chips get activated. So you can free up your mental resources elsewhere, and therefore concentrate all your your resources on uh, maximizing your awareness and seeing how is the fight going and what information can I get from what's happening. Okay. Right. Yeah. So well, just let the trip do the work and just go to the site with the team. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm gonna go step by step for every single thing that we see. So right now we see enemy in a flash. Okay, great. We see that uh, the jet is playing outside a garage, and uh, she's on the opposite side of the wall. Viper is playing in a completely random position in the open of OC Long. Okay, fine. Uh, Rain is playing on site, uh, tucked to the boxes, and Omen is playing on platform, also pretty much on the open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the wall is going down. Now Omen's like fully exposed. Jet's also exposed. Oh. And now we see four people. We see the Sage outside the garage. We see three people at CT spawn. The Rain and the Omen and someone else. Right. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's four out of five right Yeah, now. that's about four out of five. And unfortunately, we're not in position to help any of these fights happening right now. But, but at least and we can be aware of what's happening around us right now. I, I, I'm, not even, I'm not even sure if I was even aware of the minimap this second. So. Yeah, it's really crucial to be aware. Okay, so we see four people. Fights are happening. Sage dies. Now we know that the, who the third person is. It's the the the, um, the Silva. So the only unknown right now is his Jet. So maybe we could consider Jet could be flanking. Who knows? And then at least we we would be ready to expect what's gonna happen on this flank. That we're gonna see a Jet, and she could dash. She could, she could smoke. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Our Jet dashes. We still have. The, okay. Now we see the Jet. Now we see all four players. All four players are are pushing on a CT spawn. Yeah. At yeah. this point, we should give up flank. Flank is, is zero yeah. zero value. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see if I actually did it, did it or not. Uh, yeah, we're not being know. aware. Okay, well, what, what? Yeah. Oh. One enemy remaining. Kill. Help Okay, when is he? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I actually didn't actually watching this clip. I didn't, I didn't expect the 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 arena was to be in there. Oh no, I, I thought they were all back when I, when I looked at the, looked at the map. Yeah, that's what I was up to, and I'm not really sure why they would rotate to garage when all four of them were already pushing on a CT. That should be more than enough to just forcefully take remaining. CT. Oh, open. Okay, another thing I would consider is that once you get to somewhere on site, that we should use our second trip, uh, not sorry, second trip, our second TP, and expect in the worst case scenario that we'll be forced to take a fight on site to defend the bomb. Possibility, yeah. I mean, 3v1, 3v2, it's unlikely, but possibility. Enemy remaining. Okay. So that round, mostly just some awareness issues, and really paying attention to what's happening around us. Some being sense issues, we're not really sure how to play off our trips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually, actually, uh, well, I think, uh, like, I, I think I, I play, uh, most of, most of these agents kind of brain, brainless, just like, place the draft there, because it's probably good to catch someone there. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I don't agree with this. I mean, the idea of having the ship watch make is good. The problem is that you're, you point it way too close to the corner, so you're not really thinking about angle advantage. If someone, mm. an enemy is like flanking, they're pushing uh, from oh, T-spawn, yeah. they're going to see the trip because of how close it is to the corner versus how far they're going to be from the corner. Mm. That makes sense. And the same so, goes like... for the first trip as well. Okay. So think about the, the radius of your trip and what it's intended to watch that there's better so, positions for your trip to be in. So he, um, wish that put it like close to the point. Like halfway to the plant or something? I would just put it directly on top of the plant. That, sh that should generally be enough to cover the, the stairs oh, really? to the right. Yeah, that should be generally oh, enough. Like... Yeah. Wait, so put, putting it in, in that green pot yes. thing, that's enough? I mean, oh. you, you can you can check by looking at the minimap. Okay. So okay, let's say a... that uh, we put the trip here, right? Actually, just having the trip in your hands, actually... Yeah, having the trip in your hands shows you the radius already. So if you look at the minimap, you, oh. you see where the radius is. Okay. Oh, so you just sense. need to have the radius just be long enough to cover what angles that you're trying to cover. Yeah, that's good to, That's so definitely good. To when you yeah. put it uh, like here, right? If you look to the right side, it's covering beyond the stairs. It's coming past the wall. But that's wasted space because the enemy can't be inside the wall. So mm. you can 
tuck your your trip further inward. Just imagine oh. like your trip is like is is like a, a teammate, right? Or is yourself? Imagine if you were the trip. Like, how would you want to watch uh, a T spawn stairs push? How would you want to watch a garage push? Right? Where would you where would oh. you want to stand? Yeah, I guess that plant would probably be the best spot to not get caught. Right. You want to always be thinking about angle advantage, making sure that you're you're far away from the angle as possible, so that you can um, not expose yourself before the enemy does. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So, it's to th- so these uh, trap. So, like, uh, most of these traps, I can just think of it like as a, as a person, right? Like, yeah, uh, like the like the bot from Killjoy Two, and right. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So we put trips here. Okay, fine. At least they're watching flank. And then we put uh, first TP. Where's the first TP? Okay, that was the first TP. I don't know why I saw the second one. Okay, so we put a TP here. And um, presumably we're going to put a second TP on C site, right? So we're putting our first trip, uh, first TP here. I think so. So, and, I, 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 oh no. In that case, what I would do instead of putting the trip on uh, here, on this ground here, on on the, the grass here, what I would do is I put the trip on. I keep saying trip. The the TP on the boxes, so that oh. it's closer to yeah. C site, slightly closer. I don't know, like two characters just, distance closer or something like that. Yeah, that give me more. Yeah, it gives you more range on your 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 second TP. Okay. So, for example, if you wanted to put the second TP that's uh, I don't know on site or deep on site, back site or something like that, or maybe even CT spawn, maybe it could reach there. Who knows? But at least it'll be slightly it'll be a little bit closer. And I'd say as as a rule of thumb, given two uh, TP locations for your your first uh, TP, that I would generally choose the location that is more central or closer to the center of the map. That would give you the most options for placing your your second TP. Okay, so play, play okay. I, I, yeah, I should have put it, put it to the corner of the box. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah just in general, try to put it close close to where you expect to put your second TP. Okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh. Most of these teleports, are, these placements are kind of, kind of, uh, I don't, I don't think about it that much. You gotta work in the movement here. All set up. Yep. So, own geeks. Sees two people, one platform, one backside. One has a marshal, one has phantom or something. Then, okay, Rena comes out, she's gonna flash, that's why she has flash in her hands. She flashes, we peek together. And then look at how we take these fights. Like we we just we're basically stand oh. still the entire time and just like and we oh. also don't even control our our burst either. If you see where where our, our crosshair goes. This crosshair mm. placement is good. It's unfortunate that they're crouching, so we're gonna miss. But then afterward we shoot two bullets and then we don't pull down to control our spraying because we're basically close to spraying because we haven't waited long enough for our burst to reset and because we're not waiting for, for our burst to reset look at where our bullets are going it's going way too high way too high look at where mm-hmm. crosshair is now it's, crosshair is above um it's like on the the top box basically okay and nobody can stand that tall so our, our bullets are completely whiffing 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 yeah, whiffing and see how far it is now now it's really high really really high only boost who could be this tall is jet updraft <laughs> So uh, two things: movement and um, controlling your your shots, movement. I guess, so to speak. What what type of movement that works? What should I be doing here? You should be moving in between shots. So it seems like your intention is to shoot like one or two bullets and then wait, because here you're not going to like a full nose one spray, but instead like you shoot two, you shoot two, you shoot two, something like that. So first is that you're not waiting long enough in between your shots, so your shots are, oh. are just going super high because of uh, okay. a recoil, right? 
And the second thing is that you're completely stationary the entire time that you're doing this. I, I am stationed. Like, I yeah. mean, should I be, like, what kind of movement would I be, or should I be doing? You should strafe in between shots. Yeah, that, that's the like, strafe. Like, I, is, is strafing more than W and D? Like, uh, is, strafing, uh, is, oh, no. strafing is usually A and D. Oh, I mean, not not W and D, A and D. Yeah, it's generally A and D. So I just like uh. I like hover between those keys back and forth or something. That would be more like along line, along the lines of counter strafing, but the, oh. at the very least, you should be moving between shots. So the idea is that you have to stand still when you take your shot to be accurate, but then mm -hmm. when you're waiting for the the recoil to reset before you take mm -hmm. a second shot or a second set of shots rather, then you should move. While while you're waiting for that reset to happen, like yeah, we're waiting okay. for that cooldown, so I mean, okay. So you make yourself harder to hit. You make yourself okay. uh, less vulnerable. You're you're basically vulnerable because you're not able to shoot back accurately, but the enemy can shoot shoot you accurately. So so the um, like creating movement doesn't affect the accuracy that much, does it? Yeah, it, it like, affects it if you're moving while shooting. Okay. okay. You want to be standing still while shooting. But you want to be moving while you're not shooting. Does that make sense? Okay, that makes sense. So, so while like so, I guess my first shot goes out, and and <clears> then <throat> uh, I I strafe a little bit, and then uh, I shoot it. I shoot again, right? Yeah. Like, what, 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 like once I'm like still, again. Another way to think about it is that if you shoot three bullets and then mm -hmm. wait and then shoot three bullets and wait like that kind of cycle that kind of rhythm then while you're waiting you should be moving okay that but makes sense. while you're shooting those three bullets you should be standing still so okay. you so you shoot three bullets you shoot it accurately because you're standing still and then because you don't want to full spray so you wait i don't know like two seconds one to two seconds for your recoil to reset so that you become accurate again while you're waiting you move so you become hard to hit okay that makes sense. This this strafe. I mean, the strafe. Well, only I mean strafe when I need to uh, reset my gut my gun recoil, and and then one and then stop strafing when I'm when I think I'm about when I, when I think I'm ready to like uh, shoot straight again. Right? Yeah. So strafe slash kind of strafe in between bursts. Stand still when shooting. But move when not shooting. Okay. Uh, and what, what's your opinion on crouching? Like, uh, I stopped. I mean, like, I stopped crouching a while back because I heard people saying it's bad to do that. But it's but very very situational. I would say in general, don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Okay. So uh, I I probably won't be repicking back repicking the habit back up. Okay, so some movements, strafing, controlling our bursts. Uh, actually, let me go back to it. So, like, uh, in terms of controlling our bursts, your, your burst fire. In terms of that's uh, one thing you could do is like during like a uh, pre-round, um, pre-round, for example, like during the warm-up, whatever phase, setup phase, that you can just shoot at the wall, and you can shoot, I don't know, two, three bullets at the wall and then pause and then shoot another two, three bullets and then pause and shoot another two, three bullets. So based on where the, the bullet holes end up, you can tell immediately um, how accurate you are and how long you need to wait in between your shots. Just keep aiming at the same hole. Right, right so that's something you could do in like round or even in the training room with like bots or whatever just like shoot out the wall and see where your bullets end up okay okay so just turn it out there okay Reloading. <clears throat> okay so besides that this happens arena flashes get your gun fight she gets a kill she's she's healing i think she's not healing but she's just going in she just dismisses right she dismisses 
Oh, not, I'm not really sure, but she's on site already. They're on site, we need to get there. ACP. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now both enemies are dead. Now Reyna is like really good. I mean, site should be basically be clear. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still back. Yeah. Move too far away. Oh, I have oh. them. Okay, great. So here's a, here's a situation where we have our same two trips. And now um, the first trip has given us the warning that, okay, someone is flanked. Now we can just basically just play off the, the second trip. But we shouldn't peek like this. We should let the next the second trip make contact first. One enemy remaining. So your team, last person is flank. Possibly going garage. Probably going garage. Definitely going garage. Is in garage. Push her jet. Push her jet. She's not gonna be winner. She's. She, okay. Minimap awareness. You see where she is. Okay. That she's. Already in the garage, like a uh, corridor, right? Here's Arena. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's. Yeah. I, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. She I, cannot pass I, the actually, window. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never watched the mini map. But yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, okay, look at the mini map. And then even even without the mini map, we, we see our jet. Our jet's with us. Great. With us, with us, with us. She gets in good fight. We can trade out. But here we're too far away. That's true. Now we're really far away. Now, if if the sage is waiting inside garage, jet fights the sage. We're too far away to do anything about this fight. Sure. So so far, awareness is a big issue. We're not really aware of the minimap. We're not really aware of what's happening in front of us. We're also not really thinking about. Uh, I'm assuming you didn't comment any of it. Okay, yeah, that makes. That automatically the first ship is broken. I have them. Generally, I would even just add to that, and because even though that, uh, um, that your teammates will get will get a calm that or your trip is broken, but oftentimes I still like to to calm and talk about it just to make sure that people are aware that it doesn't get missed by people. Say that my my flank trip, uh, my trip broke. Care, care flank, something like that. Yeah, like flank, possibly going to garage or something. Yeah, care, care flank. That's all you have to say. And then at this point, we last person is definitely somewhere flank. Yeah, I, I, I think the reason why I stayed this back is I didn't watch the mini map, but I thought, um, I don't know, I think for some reason I thought maybe this one would go off or something, but I guess it didn't. So even if it goes off, we shouldn't, we shouldn't peek this. We should uh, let the, let the trip make contact first. Uh, then we <laughs> trade the trip, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably yeah. That's probably better. I mean, that's a, uh, definitely better. Yeah. But uh, in this specific situation, it's like your jet is playing playing aggressive, so that kind of passive play won't really cut it anymore. Now, now we we just have to play off our jet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, the other part of what, what point I was trying to make was uh, we should come to our team because we've our trip was activated. We we know exactly where the enemy, the last enemy is. We generally exactly where the last enemy is. Mm -hmm. Say that the sage is flank, so that therefore your team doesn't have to watch useless angles like B site or CT spawn, and they don't have to play so passive on site. Instead, they can take um, better angles or set up crossfires where they expect the sage to come from. Right. So if sage is flank, she can either be T spawn, she can either be in mid, or she can either be in garage. Those are only three possible places, given that the trip was activated on a couple seconds ago. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. I, I think at this point, like, what maybe maybe our team watching us going going there with our comms, they're probably also looking at looking at C long or something. Well, and uh, if I said uh, that the uh, that the trip went off like uh, around mid to garage or something, I think they would have just watched um, back of B site or the and the garage or something. They would watch back of B sites. Not B site. Uh, what, what what do you call that place between B site, um, B site and C site? Uh, like uh, C link. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Like watching there. A oh, viper is already there, so CH cannot possibly be. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So again, Makes the sense. three, the only three possible places the last place can can be are T spawn, mid, and garage. So if you okay. were to come to your team. Tell them that last person is flank, and then mm -hmm. 
as you get more and more information, tell them exactly where last person is. Like for example, if you inject push into T spawn, then you clear T spawn, you immediately rule out the possibility that Sage could be T spawn. Therefore, Sage could be mid or she could be garage, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, yeah, at least come to your team so you again your team can set up so that your team is not wasting time looking at CT spawn, looking at useless angles. Because mm -hmm. like what happens right now, your Viper looks at B side, which is a waste of time. Your Reyna mm -hmm. is like, I don't know what she's looking at CT spawn, waste of time. Omen looking at CT spawn, your whole team is looking at CT spawn, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Instead, Viper, if she if you come to your team that uh, that Sage was flank. Maybe the Viper will decide. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in garage window, so that if the Sage pushes into garage, I, ha I have a, like a great timing uh, opportunity to do a timing peek. If she uh, pushes from garage to to C site, or if she decides to jump into the window, I'll have on my crosshair. I know exactly where to place my crosshair. I'll just be ready. If she pushes into the window, she gets she dies. Sounds okay. Yeah. So calm. Yeah. So come to your team. Yeah. At this point, we, should, we can go fast, go a little bit faster. So now we go a little bit slower because after the, it's like a subtle difference here. Where like during this this time, this brief two to three seconds that she's fighting you, Rena, you go fast because things are happening really fast, and she can't possibly really deal with you pushing from pushing behind her while she fights the Rena. But now the fight's over. Now we bring on our gun. Now we want to match our our jets our jets timing. But here we're not really watching it, and then here we're not really aware that uh, the sage already killed two people on site, and we're looking at window for some reason. And then no one picks up a kill. So awareness, comms, game sense, all that so far in that round. Any questions so far? Uh, maybe like something. Maybe like it. it is there like a thing that you do to like practice kind of uh, strafing and stuff? To practice kind of strafing? Yeah, I mean like, uh, like like the the common movements that like help you, uh, normal gunfights and stuff. Yeah, you can like, practice it uh, in the pre round, like right now. You're in the buy phase. You have uh, eighteen seconds to practice it, or you can practice it uh, in the, in the training mode. It's it's just uh, it's just a a d and n a d right like a a and the weight a little bit and d something. Generally yes. Okay. All right, and I'll link you some some drills that you can do afterward if you remind me. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. <clears throat> that works. Teleport ready. Reloading. Reloading. I don't know if you realize, but you put your TP like right next to each other. Uh, what happened? Your your TPs are you're not really TPing at like a considerable dip, uh, distance. But yeah, not a big uh, deal. If you were ex if we're expecting to take a gunfight from from too long, then okay, then it makes kind of sense. Reloading. Yeah, I just went to have two. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Something I'll consider. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily that what you did. That that one was was super egregious, but. Uh, so the previous one we went C, right? Yeah, previous one we went C. And we saw we actually saw three people. And then we do the same thing here. And now we see one person, two people. We see at least two people at C that one thing you can consider is that we just give up to the C push and then go A, like go where Viper is. Oh, uh, it's come to the team that uh, we should just go to the uh, uh, different side. Right, because because of two things. The the last round we saw three people, right? We saw Omen was somewhere inside I think. Mm -hmm. so we see Jet, we see Reyna, and we see Omen, right? Mm -hmm. Reyna was backside, Jet's on platform or 
Left on backside. Reloading. And the omens uh, outside the garage, which is right here. Right. So yeah. the enemy team stacked C that this round, the previous rounds, and somehow we still managed to take it. But that's that's also information, right? And we realized that they stacked C, and we still took C sites in one round off of that. So that we would expect that, oh, they're probably going to stack C again to tr try to hold it, right? So let's on to the next round. What do we see? We see an arrow. That's one person, Soba. Next thing we see, a sage wall. That's two people. <laughs> Presumably, there's probably a third. Eventually, we do confirm that there's a third. The jet's here, back sites, that we should just consider going somewhere else. Consider going A, consider going B. Yeah, that, I mean... Okay, yeah, that's definitely a lot of information that I, I when I play these games, I didn't ever consider them, like, uh, I mean, I should have thought, like, that. that's that's three people, and it's like, yeah. you know, but, uh, I guess at, at the very most, I think my, my brain was, it was just so, it's maybe at most over, and uh, and maybe a Sage there, I don't know, in my brain, I, I, I probably think, like, Sage probably wasn't, uh, it probably just left that place or something. And that that is a possibility. It's just um, I want to say unlikely, but just a possibility. I I would just assume that if Sage Ball is here, Sage is by also also, by, yeah. also here and probably yeah. playing off the wall. Yeah, that makes sense. So that there's a, there's a, there's three people there. Okay. Okay. So immediately we decide to break the wall. I like it. Generally, whenever I see Sage Ball, I always break it as soon as possible. Most of the time, there's some specific scenarios I will. Think about whether to break it or not. But here we break it immediately. Great. And then at this point, this is the point where I would consider going somewhere else because we know that there's at least two people here, probably three, that mm. yeah, that we can go somewhere else and we can fight like a 5v1 or a 5v2 elsewhere in the map. And that would be a lot more winnable than fighting a 5v3. Yeah, and, and they have, the, have more angle advantage because uh, they got their... I mean, they. I mean, they know exactly where they probably. I mean, they know exactly where we are, but we don't know where they are. Yeah, and uh, other thing too is that you can use the sage wall against them to to bait information because, like, here you guys are so long, you break the sage wall and then you leave, right? And then now the enemy cannot rely on the sage wall to cover so long. Now they always they have to keep at least one person watching C at all times, and most likely they're going to still continue to keep the same two to three people on C sites, expecting a C push because the wall is broken. Yeah, that makes, that makes So that buys sense. even more time for your team to just instantly rotate and then go toward A, go toward B somewhere else, while the enemy okay. team like wastes three people sitting on C site where a push is not going to happen. Okay, that makes sense. That's... Yeah, well, if I get the information that, like, if I see a couple of abilities, uh, I should, uh, it's probably a good idea to leave the current site. <laughs> especially, especially, I mean, not especially, <clears throat> I mean, because I'm playing attack. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions so far? Uh, no. Okay, so we'll go to the next round. Yeah. Or should, actually, should I jump jump to some rounds on defense? Because uh, so far we've only really covered five rounds on uh, on attack. Sure. So this round eleven, round twelve. So do you want to see a pistol round or like a a buy round or? Switching sides. Uh. Yeah, I get. I guess so. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I think I had some moments, but I just don't remember. Okay, so let's look at pistol rounds. And again, Haven is like Chambers playground because you have so many opportunities to to set up your TP. You can set up your TP on top of uh, this this uh, boxes on C sites here, taking off angle. You can set up your TP outside of garage. Or I'm sorry, um, inside a garage, and then. Taking early peek outside of garage, you can set your TP in, in B site, take a take a peek outside of B site. You can set up your TP at uh, a, a long and take an aggressive angle A long. 
and then pick that early, get information, get a pick, whatever, TP out when you need to. So many opportunities. You can even set up a long and TP into A Heaven so that you see a push, then you are automatically in a good position, you're in A Heaven. Like so many opportunities that you have with TP. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna try to look at, but understandably that you said that you're not really paying attention too much about your TP usage. Yeah, do I even put uh Yeah, we don't even put TP here, which if your if your goal was to play on platform, you should definitely have a TP here because that makes for, a lot of sense right now. Yeah. For any normal agents that you play this this position, you're trapped here. Hundred yeah. percent. Unless you have a dash, yeah. unless you have a dismiss or a TP. Mm -hmm. Because like if people start pushing you and you don't immediately kill the first person or even like two people possibly, depending on how fast they're executing, then they're gonna be already like knocking your door while you're you you don't have an opportunity to get out. Unless you have a flash or unless you have a smoke or something, so you can break line of sights and cross uh, back onto the site or get to CT spawn or something. But otherwise you're gonna be you're gonna be finding yourself trapped on, on platform. Okay, so so far I like that you're you're playing to your gun advantage. This is definitely what you want to do. You have a sheriff, golden sheriff on on pistol round, so you're gonna win every single long range fight. Which generally you should. And this is what I mean by this is what I mean by your mini map is is to, is you don't see the full mini map and that's an issue, right? Yeah. You only see your omen garage. You only see your your arena B site. We have no idea what Jet is. We have no idea what Viper is. We have no idea what what they're looking at and what they see. Nope. So they say, Viper says something. Enemy spotted A. We have no idea if that's series. Uh, I guess now we see Jet inside series, so it's not necessarily series. But we don't know if they're they're crossing into series or if they're pushing A long, because we don't have information from any map. So this is where it's becoming a bigger issue. And again, if you had your TP set up, you would have faster rotates. So that too. True. Oh, no, no, I don't TP for some reason. Oh. Do you really want to put your TP? It's debatable to put your TP here, but generally, I would put your TP more central to the map. Again, so for example, putting it into uh, into the A link, so like straight ahead to your right, and tuck it oh. into there. So that that that, that um, therefore you can keep that there for almost an entire round, and then you can just move your second TP where it needs to be, where you put your second TP on sites, and then you pick it up. You put your second TP inside sewers. You pick it up. You put your second TP in at a lobby. You pick it up. Whatever. Whereas the first TP can just be in a good spot all the time. Okay. So, again, awareness. During this rotation, we should be looking at the mid-map. Unfortunately, we can't see everything, but we can see some things. We see the jet. She kills the Sova. The jet is inside the sewers. The white the right ball is up. Up for I don't know, maybe another five seconds, depending if the Viper keeps it until she runs out of toxin. But we know that for sure. Um, sewers is clear because Jet is watching sewers. We know for sure that site is clear because Viper is on site. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also see that Arena pushing mid, and we see our, our Omen already pushed mid and is already pushing into a lobby flank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have two things. One is that Fights are likely to happen very soon because of how aggressive that your Omen is playing and pretty soon your Reyna is catching up to him. And we know that the, oh, site, yeah. is, the site is fully clear. So we should, based on these, these two facts, that we should run off our knife out, get into a good position as fast as possible. Okay, so... Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, Okay, okay, I should, I should definitely read into like uh, where where my teammate is is is, is going to like which teammate my team my other teammates are going towards or something. Yeah, so pay attention to the map. Pay attention to where your teammates are positioned. Pay attention to what your teammates are looking at, and 
what your teammates see versus what they don't see. So I've talked about uh, what your teammates' positions and then talk about uh, what what they they see and don't see. So right now they don't see anything, but they are looking at things. So Omen is looking into sewers, and Jet is positioned on the other side of the wall of sewers. So based on that, we can deduce that sewers is one hundred percent clear. So mm -hmm. the last four players are either uh, A long or T spawn or possibly C long. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we can deduce that yes, the site is clear, so we should get to site as fast as possible. We can deduce that moments playing aggressive. We should get into a good position as fast as possible. So when you yeah. uh, when you, when you play when you play your games, do you, do you do you make all these like yes these these deductions like on, on the spot? Yes. All the wow. time. Wow. Okay, that's good. You to be, know. Yeah, you just have, you just have to be thinking about the situation all the time. Ask yourself this the same list of questions. And this all all boils down to to awareness that you need to you need to be aware of what's happening around you, what's the current situation, in order to make mm -hmm. a a good decision. Okay. So like yeah, if you, if you're missing information, like the, the lack of like Valorant is is thought of, Valorant and CS:GO are thought of like in tactical shooters in general, are games of information, not necessarily like who has the best aim. It's not really a team deathmatch type of game. It's a game of information, and the team that has the the better and more accurate information is generally gonna win, unless they completely get outplayed and outgunned or whatever. That if you know where the enemies are, if you know where the enemies are standing, if you know where they're likely to go, where they can go, then you can put yourself in favorable situations. You can put yourself in a favorable gunfight, put yourself in a favorable position. That makes it like yeah. really difficult for the enemy to do what they want to do. Yeah, that's that's what that's definitely one thing I want to try. Is just like we uh, wait, make my mini map bigger and. And try to make deductions out of my teammates' positions and what they see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions so far? Mm, no. But uh, in this case, I mean, do you think it's possible that they might be close to spawn or something? No. no. How can okay. how can they be close to spawn? Let's uh, let's uh, let's go up to that. To that. Uh, uh, I mean, I was just thinking, like, like if 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 they were, I mean, uh, 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 uh I actually don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm a super low elo player. Well, don't think about that. It's just, really? just think about like the what's what's causing you to to think of that someone's gonna be uh, spawn, right? So think of it as as um as what's I'm looking looking for, like uh. uh, uh, uh I mean, like in 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 normal game circumstances, uh, they, they they won't be there. But I, uh, I've had like a a couple a couple of matches, uh, uh, like unrated where like I just walk past. Uh, I mean, they, 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 there'll be like just teams just that they'll, they'll like to stay in in this in the spawn area for some reason. What I would say is that uh, if you, because the only way that enemy can can be CT spawn, for example, is if there was a lapse or the gap in your awareness if, if if like you didn't pay attention that oh there's no none of your teammates are watching ct spawn or there's a possibility that someone could be ct spawn and you didn't think about that but here the reason that i can confidently say no is because of information i've gotten um throughout the rounds for uh, 20 seconds or something uh, like that oh yeah. right yeah, i mean and yeah. information from the minimap based on where our team um, was positioned and, and is positioned and like what areas that our teammates have cleared. It's the same reason I can say that B is, is guaranteed to be cleared right now. Even though nobody's in B, like if you pause in this, uh, this snapshot right here, you like the main map, no one's actually in B, but I can deduce that B is 100% clear. Because why? Our Reyna pushed through B, our Omen, I think also pushed B, pushed through Garage or something. 
I can see we wind a little bit. So from the beginning of this, my man is in B, a woman is just peeking too long. A man flat, uh, she flashes mid. And where's our omen go? Our omen goes mid. She, he pushes through garage. Right? And now our omen is in mid. Okay. Now he's pushing through window. And now our Reyna is pushing through mid. Right? Mm -hmm. So we, I can already deduce that garage and B site are 100% clear. There's no way the enemy can be inside either of those two places. At least for you know, maybe like 15, 20 seconds. So that the only way that someone can be in B sites is if someone was, uh, uh, what's that place, like to the right of mid, like hiding, uh, so like where Owen pushes through, you see what, what Owen is exposed to on his right side, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the right, right side of mid, that if someone was hiding there, and then both players they, they walk they pass by the rain is passing by through mid window and then that person who could be right side of mid now decides to push into b site and now pushes into garage mm. then okay. they could be in b site within i don't know 10 seconds probably more than that because if they were standing where they're thinking they're standing that they would have to start walking onto b site or start walking into garage or toward garage because if they started running, the rain is going to hear them. And then presumably she's going to hear them and immediately turn around and be like, Oh, somebody's mid. I'm going to stay mid or come to the team or something. Okay. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just me always thinking about all the time. Where is my teammates positioned? Where are they going? What are they seeing? What don't they see? And deducing uh, the situation off of that and figure out how, what's the situation, what areas are clear. Where can the enemies be? Just constantly asking you those questions all the time, 24 7. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we see uh, two people in long fighting the woman, and we see a third person in the stage fighting a Viper. Now, a Viper is in a one and done position, she's going to need help ASAP. So we don't have the luxury of, of walking. Now we see two people. Now we see all. We know all four players are a long. The jet and the sage are about to fight a viper, and then uh, the Reyna and the Omen are gonna fight our, our Reyna and Omen plus Jet pretty soon. And because we're we're taking our time walking, we lose the opportunity to kill this jet and trade our viper. Yeah, yeah. That I so mean, it's unfortunate. Uh, I I see like I I see like uh. Like, uh, uh, I mean, while I'm playing this right now, I know <clears> that uh, I, I I still think that there's a possibility that someone might come through series, but but I mean, that's only because I didn't watch the minimap. Yeah, so it seems like just pitch it to minimap yeah. and try to improve your awareness. Okay, so unfortunately we find ourselves alone on sites, but at least we have a TP. At this point, we should consider playing around our TP find some sort of off angle to watch and then try not to be exposed to too many angles at once and then and use OTP to stay alive. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I did that. I don't, I don't think I did that. <laughs> That's what I... Okay, but hopefully you're thinking about that, right? The, the takeaway is to, is to think about yeah, these yeah. things. That... Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm, I mean, I, did, I don't think I was thinking about it at the time. I was just thinking about where the enemy yeah. could, be at, could be at right now, but now... Okay. I, I, yeah, I'll be thinking about that the next time I take a compound like this. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would do in this situation because you're you're alone on sites and the sage and the in the jet are pretty soon gonna be pushing you, but your your team is pretty soon gonna be pushing behind them, and since you're you're alone, you want to be careful about uh, taking a gunfight or taking too many fights because you don't have anyone to trade you out, and mm -hmm. you're you're likely to run into a one v two, or at least a one v two. Yeah, it's very possible in this situation because all three of them are uh, near the back area of A. Yeah. yeah. So right now you have two angles that you have to watch. One is to the left of this box and one is to the right of this box. Because uh, where the jet, the jet kills your Viper, now the jet already has the luxury of, of getting onto site if she wants to. So I would assume that she's already on site. So 
uh, what I would do is probably position toward hell because uh, by standing in hell you can um, isolate the angle and only have to worry about the left side and then not worry about the right side and you'll still be within range of your TP okay to because you put your TP here your TP doesn't reach far enough for you to go right side it doesn't reach far enough for you to go graffiti or something like that well it kind of yeah. does but not really the angle that you want you want to be able to isolate angles yep so yeah I would go hell if you have the opportunity you know you do have the opportunity you have a golden opportunity you have this omen who's completely not looking at you but you do have a time limit because uh, the sage is looking at you and you that's, take too many shots you stick around for too long that's, yeah, that's, that's still that's so you should be thinking that we want to not stick around for too long we should think about we don't want to commit to too many gunfights or yeah just, just basically just don't stick around for too long because like you're alone inside you don't want to risk dying basically yeah yeah and then taking like two shots is already like the maximum as soon as you take your second shot you should tp out especially if someone's already looking at you even like one shot might be the limit depending on what gun they have that yeah, yeah. you take one shot not open to the zone you take a second shot you should tp out immediately if you were to do that you would have survived yeah uh... Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So let's uh, let's go to let's go to you. team wins it. Great. Let's go to. Oh, we lost. That was the Van Alpha pistol. So we lost the unfortunate, and then now uh, we're forced to see. I'm trying to find a gunman basically. Yeah, maybe if... find a find a round where I have a guardian or something. Okay, so here's a banner. Uh, Stinger. That's, oh, that's your own. Okay, no man, that's your own. Okay, great guardian. Hey, Jack, can you buy me? And uh, I don't even sure even sure about this round because it's like kind of wonky by and see the previous round, three people survived, so this round the enemies. Probably gonna be on a full buy or close to a full buy, and then your team only has two people with almost a full buy, and uh, your team is a close to save. Well, at least you jacket buy. I don't know why she's buying this thing. Thanks. So this okay. So this should should be a, a fairly fairly even rounds, but the uh, jet does, doesn't have full buy. It's unfortunate. So let's use this as an example. Okay, so we put the trip on the doorway, which is okay if we expect. I'm assuming you expect the the enemy to go directly from garage to see sites, but yeah. it looks like the enemy has the opportunity to actually walk around the trip. By the way, yeah, they do. So, but uh, what I generally out for garage trips, I, I put the trips. Deeper inside garage, so like um, I guess we have an example, but like on on the inside the garage box to the left. Okay. I'll, so I'll if they, go. yeah, if they push into garage, then the trip gets activated, no matter what. They don't have any opportunity to to sidestep it. Here they can they can sidestep it. Right? They can they can walk around and go window. So just as long as you're aware of that, I mean, not to say that it's, uh, it's a bad trip, just as long as you're aware of that, there's a possibility that could, they could sidestep it and go window. A gift. Yeah, I should think about deeper angles when it comes to the trips. Like the, the trips are, like you said, uh, like like kind of like, uh, like a guy who watches flank or something. Right. Begins. Just a tiny detail, two details actually. Perfect. A gift. Is that... If given opportunity, I would put the second TP on high ground. So, for example, you put it uh, behind this behind the side boxes. I would put it on top of the box. So that way, you have when you if you were to TP, you have the opportunity to peek on like an, an off angle, basically. Mm. Like, off angle being like on top of the side boxes. Okay. So that's the first detail. Second tiny tiny detail. Is that uh, here we're ping, playing C long with our omen, which is fine, but I would, based on our positioning, I would let the omen make first contact and then we peek out. 
yeah. If there was a guy, a guy with an op or like a fort, like a stack with like, uh, I mean, a vandals or something. I mean, like they they could they, they I mean, four versus two could they could pick me off if they see me. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily what what guns that they have. It doesn't matter what guns that they have. Let's assume that they have the exact same guns that you you and Omen have. Let's say they have Phantom or Guardian, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, it's about the the order of of gunfights, so to speak. So, if you were to take a gunfight first, based on the angle, based on the position that you're standing, and the angle that you're watching, this could be a one v one, right? Because someone could be standing, like h- hugging the the wall further back, and then fight one v one with you. Like, imagine if the enemy plays correctly and they slice the pie, they slice this this C sight or the C long angle. Mm-hmm. If they do it correctly, it's a one-on-one one with you and them. Mm-hmm. But if you wait, if you play, um, if you just like hide, like like stand here and just hide, and then wait for your omen to make contact, and based on where your omen is standing, what angles he's watching, the enemy has to be further out in the open to fight the omen, right? Mm. So that when that fight does happen, if you swing out, that's a guaranteed 2v1. Okay. That's, Does that make sense? That, that makes sense because, I mean, uh, I mean, to kill Omen, that, that's a completely different angle than, than the angle that it takes to kill me. Right. And uh, let me try but to I, let me further. But I, but I could see everything. I mean, I could basically see most of what Omen sees. So you have Omen. He's looking at the angle like this. Right, mm-hmm. and then you're on platform, and also on platform, and then you're seeing like this, right? Yeah. So an enemy could stand here and fight you. One one. This omen is too far away to swing. He would have to like swing to this spot, which is exactly where they're aiming to to join that fight. Mm-hmm. But if you if you force the, the opposite order of operations, if you just wait for the omen to get into a gunfight first, now the enemy is going to be like here, or like any, anywhere here basically, and then you just have to move to here, and you immediately join this fight, something like this. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so anyways. Back to the video, you'll see. Okay. The hunt begins. So we have Viper alone in A. She says, "Careful." We have two people on B side. They're rotating early. Your own one is pushing to garage. I would consider pushing to garage, but it depends how the previous rounds went. Now you have three people on site. Now site is a maybe. Wouldn't be fast though. Oh, we wasted time playing this trip. There's no way that anybody could be B because your Omen's already pushed through mid. Now he's in window. Oh, now yeah. he's in a lobby. Oh yeah, no work. Oh, just got picked off. Let's see, where is our team? Viper is in Suez Cubby dies and our jet is like slowly walking him so unfortunate but yeah i think we're just not not aware of what angles are are important which which angles that we can be vulnerable to yeah, i mean it looks like we can be vulnerable from from a link here possibly vulnerable from b but there's no way an enemy could be b yeah okay so you think so the trip um <clears throat> the, the trip here would be bad and trip is, is a waste of time. Okay. I would just put a TP. Also, you should uh, pick up your TPs so you can use them into this fight. Basically, almost immediately, like the. That's. Here, your, your TPs are used for, for the C long fights, which ends yeah, up not happening. As I'm soon as you just... decide to rotate, this needs to be a habit where, like, we're rotating. These trip, these, these trips, these teleporters are no longer useful. So, we should pick them up immediately. So that yeah, yeah. when we get to a site, hopefully our teleporters will come off cooldown or be close to off cooldown. That we can set up our teleporters again for the retake. Okay. Uh, yeah. I ju- 
Yeah, that's the thing I, I do. It's like I don't pick. I don't. If I do pl place them now, I don't take them back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I need to do. I need to. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I keep, I keep neglecting one of uh, Ch Chamber's um, best utility. <clears throat> okay, any other questions so far? Mm -hmm. Assuming that's a no? Yeah, so far... Uh, Okay, so I have time to do uh, one more round, if you like, because uh, I have to go pretty soon. So if there's a specific round that you want to want to jump to, we can go over that one. Uh, I'm not sure. I, f is it, it, I feel like maybe it's like round 9 or round 10. Uh, um, on, where, on attack? Where, no, 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 no. 9 or 10. Like like I mean we're 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 winning nine to ten nine or ten okay to... so nine nine to ten I guess I think so um I don't remember I yeah I think it's this one maybe okay so let's watch this round let's see well, we don't have chips which in, which is really bad yeah we have a guardian which is good. And then we didn't uh, put any TPs beforehand, which is unfortunate. And we're playing B. So whenever we're playing B, generally it's a good idea. Well, I wouldn't say you should always do it, but it's good to set up on the high ground. Because again, it's like more of an offing. It's it's less expected than something playing on sites and like left or right side of mid or in yes. A link or C link or whatever. Setting up on high ground is generally really strong because it's harder for people to check. It's less often that people will check. Okay. Uh, more high ground um, uh, teleports. Yeah, set up on high ground. Okay, I think I'll keep... I try to keep in mind that every time I place a teleport, I, uh, I'll look, I try to look for a high ground. And then, yeah, okay. if, you're, if you're planning to play B sites, automatically I would just like put TPs to get onto the high ground and then Maybe you could keep your teleporters there, or you can move your teleporters around. That way you, you can reset them up afterward. Because uh, during the buy phase, even if you use up your TP, the cooldown is only like 2 seconds. So okay. it doesn't really use up your, your TP cooldown. You can still reset up your TPs and replace them whatever you want. Or even re re like use your TP immediately, but as soon as the round starts. Yeah. So, fortunately, we need to take the time to set up beforehand. So now we're supposed to put them to some semi out like, suboptimal positions. Okay, we rotate to A, but again, we gotta pick up our teleporters. Pick up our teleporters, because they're not useful right now. Now we wait. This is too early. They're way too early. Way too early. You're not paying attention to the map. You're not paying attention to the Viper. This whole time we're rotating, look at the Viper. Look at where is our Viper position, what is she looking at, what is she not looking at, and how can we play off of this Viper. Our goal is not to peak A long and like hard commit to this A long. I mean, if you have an op, then sure. If you're really confident in this 1v1, then sure. But generally speaking, you shouldn't take 1v1s, especially in defense. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. But now, like, because of this semi wide swing, you're kind of far from the corner. Now you. A lot more committed to this fight. Like, look at where Sage's Sage position. She's closer to her corner than you are to yours. One less. You get the one tap, which is great. But now again, look at where Viper is positioned. What you're looking at. She's kind of looking at sewers, but if someone's pushing from sewers, you're gonna make first contact, which is not what you want, because you're forced to look at two angles at once. Here you're looking at long. Okay, fine, great. But then you're also exposed to sewers, and your team is nearby, but. They're not in position to to help cover sewers, they're not in position to trade you out. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that. Now now we're pretty safe because the wall is up. I mean it's playing aggressive, consider playing aggressive as well. Looks like she really wants to play aggressive, she should also push aggressive. Now we should consider rotating because now we're not doing anything useful. 
So, Alvina spent two flashes and she ulted. She's peeking along. Along is clear. Viper peeks uh, sewers, kills the jet. You see his omens there. Now they're gonna re-peek again. Omen and Viper are gonna re-peek the enemy omen. And so that's basically a tier one. Most likely they're gonna win it. We know that Elong is clear. Most likely still clear. Possibility that someone could be a lobby. That uh, we're not really watching. We're not really getting any value right now. That we're watching along. There's no possibility that someone could pick us from Elong for at least five, possibly ten seconds. Mm -hmm. That we'll, we will have more value doing something else. Probably we should rotate to B or rotate to C. Just in case. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, like me me just pick yeah, I think they probably won't be coming here. Right. But you also have your whole team here. So even if they do come here, your team can shut mm -hmm. them down. It'll be a four V three. Okay, so in this situation it uh it uh, it's I'm probably more useful as a lurker while my team is here. Uh yes, you can think of it as a lurker. Ideally, you would you would have trips. So ideally, you would have a trip at B. You ideally have a trip at garage or a trip at C somewhere. So you have additional sets of eyes on other parts of the map. But because that you didn't buy any trips for whatever reason, that now your team doesn't doesn't have any eyes anywhere else besides A sites. Mm -hmm. Now it becomes really crucial for either you or your team in general to get information on the mm -hmm. on like what's happening elsewhere in the map. Okay. Well Okay, yeah, I gotta, um, I gotta try to, try to, think about how to like, oh, well, figure out how to open up, open the map up a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I guess that comes with comes with playing more with more games. I gotta, I gotta, know when to leave leave a site, and. I guess in in a situation when my with my when my team has uh uh, t t uh overtaken, I mean, we take, I mean, won the the battle with uh, between a couple of the, a couple of the uh, other other members. I think it's probably fine for me to leave. I wouldn't focus too much on the quantity of of games because it's possible to play like a hundred games, a thousand games, and. You won't necessarily improve or or build any skills, yeah. but mm -hmm. instead focus on the quality of games. Focus on each like the next three to five games. Focus on your awareness. Try to constantly be thinking about the the checklist that I outlined. Thinking yeah. about uh, like how, trying to read the situation, and as you do that, as you try to read the situation, then you become better and better at it. Okay, I I try to play uh, less games, but but like play games, just play like one or two games, and like where I'm just like constantly thinking about each round. Right, exactly. Okay. And I'd even say try to try to build it as a habit, so that you're not really thinking about what you should be thinking about. You're just automatically thinking about all these things. Okay. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if I, I guess if I do it, uh, like, I uh, mean, more frequently, I guess it becomes a habit, right? Yeah. Okay. Just any, make, other, any other questions so far? Just make more deductions. Like, I mean, just constantly glance in the mini, mini map. Make my, I mean, I got to first, first toggle, toggle the, a setting that, uh, opens my mini, up, mini map up. No, okay. so, but so far, no, no more questions. Okay, so originally we're in heaven, we landed one tap, the winner's playing aggressive, two flashes, she's ulting, there's Omen trapped in sewers, your team's gonna double swing them, triple swing even, and then now we said rotates. Oh, actually, okay, there is a placement one. Spike down A. One enemy That's a very enemy. strange timing. Very good. So far, so good. I'm really surprised that the, the enemy arena was actually long. Because right here, you're over in a peaks entirely very long in, into a lobby. Yes. So, so yeah, I wouldn't even ex expect it to, to happen. Yeah, the game and is And then she actually she appears like right here. 
Spike down A. Wait, where's Spike? Spike is sewer. Spike down Wait. A. And we know the last person is long, so actually it's semi risky oh. to be peeking along right now. Because this this fight is not necessary. The only thing that's necessary is to camp the bomb, which your team is already doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, they, they they'd probably lose me if if it wasn't for the wall. Maybe I don't know. One enemy remaining. Yeah, luckily the the wall went up right at the time that the the Vayner peaks and tries to aim at you. So she's shooting at you, but she's shooting like way too low, like 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 below your feet, basically like below heaven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think definitely, uh, like, like even, even, like a gold, gold or higher player, a gold, so um, gold or higher probably would kill me right there. And there. Possibly. You just have to always think. Uh, the way to think about every one v one is that one v ones are coin flips. Mm -hmm. So that uh, instead of thinking that I'm gonna win every single one v one, because not everybody is gonna be able to win every single one v one. Think about uh, what one ones are important for me to take. Like I should be taking it, or I have to take it, or it's favorable for me to take. Versus which one ones are risky for me to take. Like the reward is not worth the risk. Or if I die, my team loses this map control, loses control of a side. Or if I die, then bad things will happen. Yeah, I got. I got. I got. I got. Consider like, I got way the risk versus rewards type right, of risk uh, reward. map control. Yeah. Or you could uh, put put yourself in situations where the risk is zero. Where let's say you're you're with a teammate and you double peek an angle. So for example, what your team does at series here. Somewhere around here. The Viper peaks, kills the jet, and then now you look at your omen of Viper, they double peek the enemy omen, right? They double peek the enemy omen. And looks like he's trapped and still trapped and so now your jet and viper are double peeking. You've got man. Triple peeking now, where it's the jet, the viper, and the Reyna all peeking sewers against the against the omen. Like look at the omen, right? He's like completely fucked. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way the omen's gonna survive that. Maybe he kills one person, maybe the jet will die. The, the jet's picking first contact, maybe the jet will die. But for sure the Viper will get the trade kill. For sure the Reyna will get the trade kill. For sure the Omen will die in exchange for the jet. Yeah. So you should also think about these types of situations where you can set up. If you can set up a trade kill, where you still have the same reward, where you kill the enemy, but now the risk is zero because, like, even if you die, your team will pick up, will still pick up the kill. Okay. Okay. It's I gotta um, think about uh, where the 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 most risk is is just a trade. Yeah, so basically like look for ways to either yeah. mitigate the risk or yeah. look for favorable engagements so the risk is generally lower or yeah. otherwise look for engagements that you have to take versus don't have to take. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's... Okay, um... So I guess in, th in this situation uh what like what what would would you say like I should have joined Omen or something? Uh, which one? The the Sova? The Reyna? No, 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 no. I mean, like, should 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 I just should have like, like joined the, uh, uh, with the Omen? Like, be close to where the Omen is. Like, walk walk down the, down the flight of stairs and then. In this situation, uh, I would I would have rotated to to B or C or Garage because. Uh, I would expect mm. the enemy to, to not. I'm not even expecting an A push right now because, like, your Reyna has already peaked uh, entirely very long, and then I would, I'm not even expecting the jet to be serious. I don't know why they're so serious because, like, the Sage died by herself, which is very, very strange. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the Sage is peaking in long by herself, so. And then nothing happens for, what, like, five seconds? Five seconds, and the back walls up, so, like, any sort of A push that's gonna happen is gonna get shut down. So on black, I'm thinking I should rotate to B or C or somewhere else. Specifically, also because we don't have any trips, we don't have any information. So then, uh, what I would, other thing I would consider is that as soon as the bomb is down, that there's there's no fights that we have to take. Here we see the Vayner, Vayner's long, 
Well, we don't know where the sofa is. Bombs down sewers. If we decide to say heaven, which is fine, just just make sure that if we're peeking into um peeking to along that we're not committed about this fight. Make sure that we can, we can immediately disengage from any sort of fight from Elong. So whether it's like you you hug the corner tightly or you set up your, your TP so so you can TP immediately if you find yourself in a fight or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you like you you reduce the amount of time that you peak. So like you peak just enough for like one shot and you, you get out. Maximum one shot and then don't commit any more than that. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, like um, you like um, in terms in terms of like a me mechanical skill, like uh, I I I've been saying like, saying like a lot of pros they just have really smooth aim. Like uh, like now watching back my aim, like it just looks like very uh, what do you call it? like like kind of kind of rough. I I I don't know how to put it. Um. Like yeah. it, it kind of it kind of feels like um uh like it, it, it like when I'm playing it doesn't feel that rough when I'm when I'm looking at it, it looks pretty rough if you get what I mean yeah I think it just boils down to crosshair placement because this whole time your crosshair is nowhere near an enemy could possibly be mm -hmm. even if you at this pause frame right here your crosshair is at this door at sewers but your entire team is at sewers and has cleared sewers so it's like what is, what is your crosshair even aimed at? Can the enemy even pop up in here? Like, no. The only way the enemy is going to pop up in your screen is going to be Elong. So therefore, your crosshair should be looked at Elong. Okay, well, place, place okay. at Elong. Okay, okay. Okay, I get it. Like, uh, I mean, m m most of these the high level players, they just they, they just keep their crosshair very aware. Right? Like, they, like after, after they, they get a frag, they still keep it in like a lot of it's, a yeah, play it's not about having good aim, it's about having good crosshair placement and good awareness slash game sense about what angles are important to, to watch. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. You definitely need to work on crosshair placement, map, uh, just reading the, the map where the enemy, I mean, re reading the situation. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, and definitely placing the placing the 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 trips uh, on on the way here at least. So yeah. All right. I mean. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions so far before we wrap up? Um. Uh. uh no. No, I mean, I mean, it makes, so far it makes perfect sense. My crosshair should be at least, uh, like, uh, close, closer to where the, the pickup orb is, than than where it is right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. I need, I need to be more aware of these. I mean, just keeping my brain, uh, in the game at, at all times. But so far, all your points make sense. Yeah. Right. Mm. All right. So yeah, if there's something else, then uh, then I'll end it here. If you have more questions in the future, feel free to ask, and uh, I'll send you these these notes after on on Discord. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, thank <laughs> thank you uh, thank you so much. But uh, I mean, like uh, uh what? Like why are are you um like just out just out here like helping on these Valorant players? Yeah, I just do as a as a hobby. Oh. Just like to help people. Yeah. I mean, is there anything I can do? Like follow, donate, whatever. No, nah, no, it's fine. You don't have to give me anything. Uh, I mean, are you sure? Like, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, the the way I think yeah. about it is that the, for for helping other people, like if I improve the play around me, then that can indirectly improve my own play. Like I'll you know, guarantee I play against like better and better players or improve the improve the community as, as a whole, improve the scene or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if everyone like basically okay. if everyone's skill level goes up, then my skill will also go up. Oh uh, okay. Uh but they, I mean is there a thing that uh 
do you, I mean, do you, do you have like a social media thing I could follow or something? Yeah, I can send you my YouTube, Twitch, whatever. Okay. And uh, I mean, thank you so much for like all, all the, the door breakdown. Like I, yeah. like uh, like uh, me playing, I thought like I had at least some games since about after you broke everything. Now like it's just it just seems like um, I'm back at square one. <laughs> yeah, if if you insist on me paying me, then what I would say is just come back as like a as an improved player, and then with another vod that we can review, then. Then I have more things I can teach you. Okay, I'll tr I'll try my I'll try my best. And uh, oh yeah, um, I I I I also know noticed that you had a lot of like like uh programming software. Are you like a software developer? Yeah. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Are you like a software engineer? Yeah. 